This video is about the power of the ruler. We'll be using Word 2010 for our example. Everything is identical in Word 2007 and 2013 and nearly identical in all other versions of Word. The only difference is how you turn the ruler on or off. So when you begin Word, a Word document, the ruler no longer appears unless you turn it on. Now there's two different ways to turn the ruler on. There's one that makes common sense moving to the view ribbon and there's a checkbox here for ruler. When you check that box the ruler turns on. You'll see both the horizontal ruler across the top and the vertical ruler down the left hand side. And you can keep the ruler on. If you close Word with it on it'll remain on. Personally I turned my ruler on the day I received my new, new version of Word and I have never turned the ruler off. To turn it off though you simply remove, um, remove the check mark in the checkbox on that view ribbon. There's another way to turn the ruler on and off that doesn't require you to change ribbons. If you follow your vertical scroll bar, at the very top of it, there's a little icon there that says View Ruler. When you click it, the ruler appears. Clicking it again, the ruler disappears. We're going to leave it on, of course. That doesn't make as much sense, but once you know the icon is there, in other words, I don't think you would inherently know to look there for the icon, but once you know it's there, it is the faster way to turn the ruler on. So we'll start off um, with the vertical ruler down the left hand side. About the only thing you can do on this ruler is change margins. Notice that your default margins are one inch on the top, bottom, left, and right. And the gray part of the ruler designates that one inch. The white part of the ruler designates the document area. When you place your mouse on the line where the gray and the white meet, your mouse will actually take the shape of a two-sided arrow with a little box that says top margin. By clicking and holding, you're able to decrease or increase the size of your top margin. It's difficult using changing margins this method to tell exactly how large the margin is. However, if you hold down the Alt key while dragging that uh, line up or down, you're able to see the exact width of both the ruler and the document area. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see a similar area for the bottom margin the gray designating the margin, the white designating the document area. Clicking and holding allows you to increase or decrease the bottom margin. Holding the Alt key down allows you to see the exact measure of where you're leaving that margin. You can also adjust your left and right margins from the horizontal ruler across the top of the page. Beginning with the right margin, you'll notice again the gray part of the ruler designating the margin, the white part of the ruler designating the document area. Over here on the left, the gray part of the ruler designating the margin. The problem with the horizontal ruler is in addition to margins, on the horizontal ruler you can also set four different types of indents and a variety of different tab stops that can be set or removed. So you have to be careful that when you click, you make sure that you are in the exact place that you want to be. To change the right hand margin, I'm going to be where the gray and the white meet, slightly above that little pentagon marker. Notice that the mouse has changed to a two-sided arrow. Notice that the box says right margin. I need to make sure that these things are in place before I click and hold and drag that to the left to make it larger or to the right to make it smaller. As before, I can hold down the Alt key in order to see the exact measure of where I've placed that margin. On the left hand side though, I have two different pentagons and a rectangle representing different types of indents which we'll cover in a minute. I need to be right where the gray and the white meet pretty much right between those where those two tips of the pentagons meet. Notice the mouse has changed to a two-sided arrow. Notice again that it says left margin. I need to make sure that this has happened before I click and hold and drag to the right to increase or to the left to decrease that margin. Again, holding down Alt allows me to see exact measurements. So all four top, bottom, left, and right margins can be set from the ruler. I'm going to quickly get those back to one inch default by going to the page layout ribbon, choosing margins, and choosing normal, which will immediately take me back to the one inch defaults. Then I'm going to go ahead and go back to the home ribbon. <coughs> there are four different types of indents designated by this pentagon, this pentagon, and this little rectangle, and this pentagon all the way over here to the right hand side. So the 
indents are a paragraph item. So I need to make sure that my cursor is in the paragraph or if it's more than one paragraph that all the paragraphs I want to be affected by the change are selected. In this case I only have one paragraph so my cursor is in that paragraph anywhere. You're probably initially taught to indent using the icons. On the home ribbon in the paragraph group there are icons for decrease indent and increase indent. I'm going to go ahead and click increase indent each time I click the increase indent button, the paragraph that my cursor is in is indented half an inch from the left hand side. And each time I click decrease indent, the paragraph moves back half an inch until it moves all the way back to the margin. This time as I click increase and decrease indent, watch the ruler. Each time I click increase indent, this entire marker on the left is moved in half an inch. So you can see it move across or decrease indent, you can see it move back. What that's telling me is that this marker somehow is designating where that left indent is actually at. That also tells me that I can move that marker anywhere along the ruler. The icons will only move it in half inch, in, half inch segments, but I can point at that bottom of that icon where it says left indent. So I'm actually pointing at the rectangle, click and hold, and I could make it a quarter inch or three quarters of an inch or anything I want to along that ruler. Notice then when I'm done I've moved it back to where the gray and the white meet. In other words I've moved it back to the margin so I have no indent. Now there's actually two other types of indents that can be done from this left hand side. This top pentagon represents a first line indent. So I'm going to go ahead and slide only the top pentagon in half an inch. Notice how I've separated these two. Notice that the, only the first line of the paragraph has that half inch indent. Go ahead and add some text to this paragraph so you can see that only the first line of the paragraph has a half inch indent. I'm going to go ahead and drag that back to a quarter inch so you can see that I can move that anywhere I want to. And I'm going to ultimately drag it back. I'm going to take this bottom one and I'm going to drag it half an inch over. So this is called a hanging indent. Notice that the top pentagon is where the first line of the paragraph is. The bottom pentagon is where the rest of the paragraph is. So really, even though these have two different, different types or are referred to differently, this bottom pentagon being indented is referred to as a hanging indent, where the top one being indented is referred to as a first line indent. Reality is that the top pentagon, or triangle, tells me where the first line of the paragraph will be. The bottom triangle tells me where the rest of the paragraph will be. The rectangle simply moves both triangles together, or pentagons if you want to be exact. Notice even though they're separated, I can still point at that rectangle at the bottom and move them and they move together. Now hanging indent actually confuses people sometimes. They wonder where they would use such a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add some bulleted text. Dog, cat, fish. I'm going to go ahead and select these three paragraphs and take a look at the ruler and notice how it is a hanging indent. This first top part of the indentation mark represents where the bullet is and the bottom one represents where the text is. So if I pull that bottom one farther to the right, I've increased the amount of space between my bullet and the text. Or if I pull it closer to the top one, I've decreased the amount of space between the bullet and the text. The same would be true for numbered paragraphs. I'm going to go ahead and come back up into this top paragraph. The fourth type of indent is a double indent. And to do that, you first take the left indent, pull it in, usually half an inch. And you come over here to the right hand side and pull it in half an inch. And you can see, oops, I must have missed the first one. You can see when I've done this, how both the left and the right hand sides are indented half an inch from the margin. You have to use a double indent any time you have a quotation which is longer than five lines in length. Rather than that quotation being in quotes, it should be in its own paragraph, single spaced, double indented, meaning it should be indented half an inch from both the left and the right. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and return this, and then we're going to talk about tabs. Your default tab stops are every half inch, and they actually are indicated on the ruler with this little itty bitty line that's at the bottom half of the ruler. You can see it there at a half, at one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, etc. I can actually place a tab anywhere I want to along this ruler. I've moved my cursor down to the bottom of the document. So let's say I wanted to have a tab at the half inch mark, and then I wanted the next tab to be at the three inch mark, and I wanted the next one to be at the four and a half inch mark. By clicking at those specific numbers, you'll see these little L's indicating my tab stops. So now let's go ahead and type some text. I'm going to tab, I'm going to type your name, if I can type today. I'm going to tab, maybe your address, tab, maybe your city. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. I'm going to do the next person, Mickey Mouse, Disney World, Orlando. Now, once I've typed it, I may decide that I don't like where I left the exact tab stops. I can go ahead and reselect it. I can go ahead and point at that L and click and hold and I can drag it back to a different location. Notice that since I selected both paragraphs, it went ahead and moved that middle tab stop with me. Don't panic if you accidentally end up with a mess. You can also remove tab stops from the ruler. So as you're trying to drag it left and right, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. If you're trying to drag it to the left or the right and you inadvertently pull it off and let go, you'll have a mess. Remember undo, or you can simply reset the tab stop. It doesn't really matter. Now in this case, all, th <coughs> all three tab stops that I set are left aligned tabs. Notice it's the left edge, the left edge, and the left edge that is staying lined up. There are three commonly used type of tabs. There are actually five types of tabs, but three of them are commonly used and we'll cover them today. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the end of my document, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the, notice I'm in my, a new paragraph, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the existing tab stops by simply pointing at the L's and pulling them off of the ruler. For my next example, I'm going to set a tab stop at one inch, and then I want to set a center aligned tab at the three and a quarter inch mark. That'd be my exact center. Over here to the left of the ruler, you'll see this little box with an L in it. I'm going to go ahead and click it one time. See how it turns into an upside down T? And then I'm going to click to set a, up a center aligned tab at three and a quarter inches. I'm going to click it again, and you'll notice it's a backwards L. So when I come over here to the five and a half inch mark, I'm going to end up with a with a right aligned tab. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my tab key. So I'm going to tab. Again, this time I'm going to type maybe name, position, telephone number. And for my text, I'm going to put in, again, I hit enter and then tab. I'm going to put in Donald Duck. He is the um, duck master. And his phone number, 555.555.1212. So you can see how it is the right edge of this text that's lined up, the center edge of this text that's lined up, and the left edge of this text that's lined up. I need to make sure that I've pressed enter in order to leave that text. Let's say I want to add one more line. I'm going to tab. We'll put Mickey Mouse in here. We'll make him the CEO. And we'll make him, let's do this one in proper phone number status. There we go. So I did these separately simply so you could see it's the right edge of the text that lines up. And finally, I'm going to take these three and I'm going to go ahead and remove the space after so that they are, appear to be single spaced. And that's how I can set tabs and remove tabs using my ruler.